Hi, I'm Dr. Tom McClellan. I'm going to give you a lecture today on immediate breast reconstruction with allograft sling. And I'll deviate a little bit from my standard where I show you a surgical video of how it's performed. This is really a lecture that I give my patients when they come in and they've been diagnosed with breast cancer and they would like to know what their options are for breast cancer related to tissue expander and implant placement. We'll go over the pros and cons of allograft reconstruction, my thoughts on incision placement, and then show you some case examples. I hope you find this video informative and I, help, I hope that it helps you with your choices uh, in the future. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call or email my office. And thank you so much for watching. Before you consider a mastectomy, understand that there, that there are really two types of mastectomy that you could undergo. There's a skin sparing mastectomy or a traditional modified radical mastectomy. In the traditional mastectomy, um, is probably more often performed now, but it's at where the breast skin is removed. And it, the, the importance of understanding the mastectomy is, is that it will impact your reconstruction, both the timeline of your reconstruction as well as the overall appearance of your reconstruction. And in addition, how the mastectomy is performed, uh, how the incision is made, etc., cetera, is, is what you need to understand. So a skin sparing mastectomy is becoming more fashionable as a way to retain the native skin of the breast. It preserves the native inframammary fold and what it allows the plastic surgeon to do is to place a tissue expander behind your muscle and immediately place fluid within that tissue expander in order to jump start your reconstruction. Some patients you may be able to save the nipple areola complex and this would be a discussion that you would have with your breast surgeon. Another thing to consider before mastectomy is the relationship of the plastic and the general slash breast surgeon. I think that a good relationship, a good working relationship between the two services is really essential for a good, a good oncologic re, a resection of the breast and the tumor, as well as a good aesthetic outcome following. Both are achievable, um, and to have that relationship is um, very important for the outcome of the patient. There are many types of breast reconstruction. There's no reconstruction. You don't have to have it. Uh, uh, tissue expander implant reconstruction is a very simple way, the simplest way to reconstruct the breast. It's the easiest way for the patient. Um, there is a traditional tissue expander reconstruction where, where you undergo a traditional mastectomy. An empty tissue expander is placed behind the muscle, and then you slowly expand out over many months to the size you want. And it essentially, as you expand the tissue expander, you're growing skin to hold an implant. There's the newer type of breast reconstruction that's been out since 2005, and that is the allograft sling, which I'll talk to you more about. There's autologous reconstruction where you use muscle skin and fat from your own body to reconstruct a breast. And this can be either pedicled, where it's left attached to your body, such as a tram or transverse rectus abdominis muscle flap, or a latissimus flap, which is from the back. The tram is from the abdomen, the latissimus is from the back. Or you could have a free flap. A free flap is where tissue is taken free from your body and then it's sewn in under a microscope um, and, and move to a different part of your body, such as the tram flap can be a free flap, or the DIEP, which is the deep inferior epigastric flap, or the S-gap or I-gap flaps, which are from your buttocks area, to reconstruct the breast. These tend to be more complex, longer surgeries, and longer hospital stay, but can form a good breast reconstruction. Where you fit on this reconstructive ladder is where you need to talk with your plastic surgeon at length. And one of the, a few of the key points are, what are you prepared to undergo as far as the surgery, length of surgery, length of recovery? What can you afford to give up, such as muscle, fat, or you don't want to give those up because of your quality of life or your uh, avocations, such as horseback riding or running marathons? All of the things that go on in your life will reflect or will contribute to the choice of breast reconstruction that you have. And that's an important um, a conversation to have early on with your plastic surgeon. 
you need to think about the timing of reconstruction. Uh, my preferred method is immediate, which is done at the time of a mastectomy, and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in this presentation, or it's delayed breast reconstruction at the time of mastectomy, or they're not candidates for breast reconstruction at the time of mastectomy. And so that's called delayed, and where your breast reconstruction is performed at some time in the future. Other things that you have to consider are radiation. Do you expect to have radiation? Does your breast surgeon expect you to have radiation? And how does the breast reconstruction, um, what is the timing associated with that radiation? Do you do it before or after? Your activity level, I touched on a little bit on the last slide, but your activity level may influence your choice of breast reconstruction, as well as the recovery time. What recovery time are you prepared to contribute or undergo in order to have your breast, such as a free flap may have a longer recovery time uh, than an implant breast reconstruction. Future procedures. What are the differences in future procedures of an implant, a tissue expander implant combination versus an autologous flap? In addition, would you consider nipple reconstruction and how is that performed? Uh, length of hospital stay. Uh, length of hospital stay is generally longer with the muscle flaps than with tissue expander uh, uh, implant reconstruction, but that is something to discuss with your um, plastic surgeon. An additional uh, node and distance status. What is your status prior to breast reconstruction? So traditional tissue expander uh, breast reconstruction, it, it can be a type of immediate reconstruction. We can put a tissue expander in at your time of mastectomy. If the skin is removed, um, and you undergo a traditional modified radical mastectomy, we can put a tissue expander behind the pectoralis major muscle in a standard fashion, but we don't put much volume or any volume uh, placed at the time because there's no skin to maintain it. The tissue expander is generally not completely covered by the muscle, which can be important. The one thing that is for certain, it requires many visits to have that tissue expander insufflated to a point at which you can get an implant in. The native breast tissue, typically on a traditional tissue expander method, is removed uh, because you're undergoing a mastectomy where that skin is removed. So what is allograft reconstruction? An allograft is a cadaveric dermis that's been treated and is uh, sterile. This can be either Alloderm or what another brand name is Flex HD. I prefer Alloderm. It's in a type of immediate reconstruction, so I do it the same day, the same surgery where you have your mastectomy. And this dermis serves as a scaffold for regeneration of your own tissue. This dermis will, will be ingrown by your own tissue and will become yours and generally forms a, a fascia type tissue or a tough type tissue that will have blood supply and can be treated like your own tissue. It has a very long history of safety throughout the body. It's been used everywhere throughout the body. Um, the nice thing is, is that you undergo a skin sparing mastectomy and the native breast tissue is preserved. That soft, supple breast tissue, the, the, a nice inframemory fold is all preserved and it's very difficult to regenerate that uh, beautiful breast tissue with a uh, traditional tissue expander reconstruction. It allows the plastic surgeon to insert a significant amount of saline into the tissue expander at the time of mastectomy and basically what that does is allows you to get a jump start on uh, breast reconstruction so that you may only have two to three office visits for saline placement after surgery Whereas with a traditional reconstruction, you may have 15 visits uh, to have saline in, uh, insufflated. So this is a, a big jump on breast reconstruction that utilizes your natural breast and allows you to complete breast reconstruction in a shorter time cycle. Just some important anatomy. As you can see, the pectoralis major muscle uh, in the diagram, we place the tissue expander behind the muscle and as you can see in this diagram, on the left hand of your screen is the allograft sewn in between the muscle and the uh, chest wall. This serves as a hammock or a, a way in which to hold the tissue expander behind the muscle. And as you can see in the right-handed diagram, this is where the tissue expander lives, is behind the muscle and behind the allograft. 
On this side view, in the black, you can see from the muscle edge to the inframemory fold is where that hammock or cadaveric sling will hold the tissue expander up under the muscle. I have a modification I call the lazy lateral incision, which allows it to be tailored to many uh, different biopsy sites, which can be um, excised in the principal mastectomy uh, incision. Uh, it allows us to bring that lateral breast tissue up medially and laterally and create a distracting scar, which is much less notable, noticeable, and I can show you examples of that. As you can see here, I've drawn in a traditional mastectomy incision, which becomes a horizontal line versus a uh, lazy lateral incision. It's very, um, m a much more natural curve linear line, uh, which tends to hide the scar. And in my patients, uh, it tends to be the way they choose to have their mastectomy performed. The advantages of this incision are it's a less noticeable scar in the AP direction that's looking straight ahead. It has excellent camouflage once you tattoo an areola onto it, and I've simulated an areola on both of these women and both are my patients. Um, you have better access to the axilla for lymph node dissection for the general surgeon. Uh, there's less flap retraction because you, you're not operating through a tiny little hole. You have a much better exposure to the tissue underneath, and uh, you preserve uh, breast viability or breast living tissue. Um, you're able to elevate that excess tissue laterally, um, in essence, reshape the breast. And on the lateral view, you get a much better breast shape. When you tend to close a traditional mastectomy incision down into a straight line, it tends to flatten the breast. With the lazy lateral, it tends to have a more um, a teardrop shape, which is more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, here's going to be a video that's going to be shown. You can see this on YouTube if you search under WT McClellan. And I, uh, I encourage you to go there to watch a skin sparing mastectomy and immediate reconstruction with alloderm sling. It's very informative. This is the patient in the video that had the procedure performed. As you can see here on the left of your screen, this is pre-op. In the middle picture, this is eight days after mastectomy, and she still has a tissue expander in there. And on the right side, this is three weeks after mastectomy. The tissue expander is in place, and we're going to start to expand this uh, lady for breast reconstruction, but she may only need one insufflation in the postoperative area, and she's already on to her next stage of breast reconstruction, which would be removing the tissue expander and placing a, a permanent implant. And as you can see, if you can imagine uh, placing a, an areola and uh, uh, creating a nipple on this breast mound, the scar is, uh, is very well hidden. This is a picture of what alloderm looks like at one year. You can see that the alloderm is, is uh, integrated, and you can actually see the blood vessels in, the, in this allograft sling. So it does become your own tissue. And I first learned uh, this procedure by Dr. Carl Brewing, who was at Brigham and Women's Hospital in 2005, um, and it really was an innovative uh, procedure. Since then, it's been published extensively. And I tried to include some of the literature here that would be informative uh, to you if you're considering this uh, type of reconstruction with your plastic surgeon. Um, there are pros and cons, as there are with everything. Um, it is a safe procedure, and it's very similar to a traditional expanded reconstruction. It has many advantages, which I listed before. Um, it capitalizes on the preserved mastectomy skin and you potentially can have an improved cosmetic result. And in my practice, there is an improved cosmetic result. You certainly need fewer visits for expansion. There is research to show that capsular contracture, which is the scar that forms around the implant after surgery, is reduced in allograft reconstruction. This certainly isn't um, the final verdict on this, but the research is leaning toward a reduction in capsular contracture progression, which is important for longevity or length of viability of the implant um, as you go forward. The negatives are it tends to have a higher seroma rate, which is a collection of fluid after surgery, which is why you have a drain. And you tend to have to leave the drains in a bit longer than you would a standard mastectomy. I tend to leave my drains in about a week um, it has a slightly higher incidence of infection. 
Um, however, many of these, seroma infection can be mitigated with uh, extension of antibiotics to a full week and uh, leaving the drains in a little bit longer. So here is a summary slide of pliable breast skin. It stabilizes the implant and tissue expander and defines the inframammary fold. It provides complete coverage of the tissue expander and implant as it's covered by the muscle and the allograft. You need many fewer expansions with two to three being my typical number of expansions versus a traditional without an allograft sling of being eight to 10. And typically these expansions are less painful because you're not stressing or stretching the muscle as much and so it's less painful. I think you get a better aesthetic outcome from the breast reconstruction. Research is supporting that there's less capsular contracture. And in addition, um, the allograft sling allows us to place a tissue expander before you receive radiation. If your doctor thinks that you need radiation, it may be better to get a tissue expander and allograft sling in place and fully expanded before you have radiation because you can still maintain the aesthetic result afterward. In the past, we've been unable to do that. If you had a traditional mastectomy, you had skin removal, and you went flat, you could not, and then you got radiation, you could not put in a tissue expander behind radiated skin and then expand it. The failure rate was extremely high. What we're now seeing is, is that if you get the tissue expander fully expanded with the allograft sling, and then you radiate over that, you're able to hold that skin envelope and you do not have the breakdown that you saw in the past. And this is a major step forward for those women who get radiation, and I have an example of that to show you. The disadvantages. It's more expensive than a traditional reconstruction because the allograft does cost money. It has a higher incidence of seroma, so you need to have a drain a little bit longer. There's a slight higher incidence of infection, but that can be mitigated with antibiotics and sterile technique. You, uh, one study out of NYU showed increased mastectomy flap necrosis, which is the flaps that are created by the breast surgeon. Sometimes they have difficulty afterward. And it may be because of two things. It may be because of retraction on the flaps from the general surgeon or that the plastic surgeon puts too much fill volume in the tissue expander. And so, uh, number one, it's good to have a good relationship between the two surgeons. And number two, uh, a, a better incision, a longer incision, may be uh, more advantageous than a small little incision where you have to have a lot of retraction. So aggressive skin retraction in a small incision may not be as good as having a longer incision and not having to retract as hard. So here's a few of my patients. Uh, on the left is pre-op and on the right is post-op. And this is a traditional incision with an areola and nipple created. I usually uh, create the nipple about two months after your final implant goes in and I generally recommend tattooing of the areola uh, but good uh, size and symmetry to the other side although one side is all that is shown. Here's another patient uh, which is pre-op on the left. Post-op this is a traditional incision uh, after nipple areola uh, uh, creation showing good uh, shape. Here's another this is a bilateral reconstruction and as you can see, there are uh, two incisions on the left, on the patient's left breast. One is a, an old biopsy, which many people like to excise, and then the standard a traditional a mastectomy incision. And this patient, again, opted not for not to have nipple reconstruction. construction. Um, here shows the, the beginning of the origin of the lazy lateral incision in that uh, the right breast has a traditional uh, incision and the left breast has a lazy lateral in which we incorporate at the biopsy site. And as you can start to see, it's distracting from the front, and particularly when you uh, uh, you can improve the shape of the breast with the uh, lateral tacking of the skin. Here's an AP view of a patient with a lazy lateral incision on the left and a traditional incision on the right. This patient has received radiation to the left breast, and as I mentioned before, if you get the tissue expander in and, and fully uh, insufflated prior to radiation, you're able to maintain a good size, shape, and symmetry of that breast, which would not have been possible uh, with traditional reconstruction and would often have required a latissimus flap or some sort of muscle reconstruction. When you have muscle reconstruction on one side and an implant reconstruction on the other side, it's very difficult to get good symmetry. 
If you're able to maintain implants on both sides, your symmetry will be much closer together. And as you can see from this uh, picture, uh, good symmetry despite radiation. And here, here she is from an oblique view. Again, good access to the axilla. And here we are. Uh, I showed you a, a patient before, um, which was about three weeks post-op. And, and as you can see, this is three weeks post-op from a mastectomy uh, with tissue expander reconstruction and allograft sling, uh, showing um, a, a good shape to her breast, good inframemory fold definition, really excellent result at this stage.